Today's video is a look at transformers, so we'll start with an obligatory reference to the order bots and then we'll move on. So the structure of a transformer is it's made of an iron core in the middle, uh, there's a primary coil which is the one you connect to a, an AC power supply, that's the squiggly line, and a secondary coil which is connected to some load, some output load on the other side. Both the coils are wrapped around the iron core or the soft iron core or actually the laminated soft iron core and we'll talk more about that later on remember soft meaning it loses and gains its magnetism really easily uh, we've got NP number of turns on the primary and S number of turns on the secondary so if we zoom in on the left hand side the primary coil side um, we'll see that when we pass a current through the wire uh, then we get a magnetic field electromagnetic field induced in the coil if the current through the primary coil changes direction, uh, then the direction of the magnetic field will change uh, inside the coil. So where it was going up on the left, it's now going down on the right. So we had current coming into the coil produces an electromagnetic field in the coil. And because the iron core is a magnetic material, then that magnetic field passes into the iron core. Just to reiterate, changing direction of the current changes the direction of the magnetic field in the core, which is really important when we move across to the secondary coil on the other side in blue. So what the secondary coil sees is, well, it's still wrapped around the iron core, and what it sees is it sees the magnetic field inside the coil changing direction. And whenever you've got a changing magnetic field and a coil of wire, you're going to induce current the direction of the uh, magnetic field keeps changing, so the direction of the induced current keeps changing. So because we need that changing magnetic field, we must, must, must have alternating current. If you try and use it with direct current, because there's not a changing magnetic field, there's no induced current in the secondary coil. So to recap, primary coil has a changing electromagnetic field. That causes a changing magnetic field in the iron core. And what the iron core is connected to is the secondary coil. So the secondary coil sees a changing magnetic field, which causes uh, current to be induced in the secondary coil. So we get electricity, electrical current in the secondary coil, despite the fact the primary coil is not electrically connected to it. Moving on to the equation, uh, if we look at the input or the primary voltage divided by the output or the secondary voltage, uh, gives us the number of turns on the primary coil divided by the number of turns on the secondary coil. Uh, now, really important that we get the colors right, so let's do that again. So the input voltage, primary voltage over output voltage, secondary voltage, is equal to the number of turns on the primary divided by the number of turns on the secondary. So we could rearrange that. Uh, it's not a rearrangement, actually. It's just writing it out in simple. So VP over VS equals NP over NS. Or we could rearrange it to give us VP over NP gives equals uh, VS over NS. Um, either of those will be fine and we'll be able to help you. So one thing to remember is that the more turns there are uh, on a particular side, the more voltage there is. So if there's more turns on the secondary, we say the voltage gets stepped up. Um, if there are more turns on the primary coil instead, uh, we say the voltage is going to be stepped down. And if we have the same number of coils on both, then that's that's interesting. Uh, that would be a step uh, off. No, no, mm, no step. Uh, who knows? So step up, step down, or no step, same step. Then if we sort of pretend that I can draw power stations, uh, power stations produce electricity at a particular voltage. We send them to a transformer, we send them to a step up transformer, so you can see lots of turns on the secondary coil there. And the voltage gets stepped up before it gets transmitted along the uh, power cables. Um, and then rather than having super high voltage in our houses, we have another transformer uh, which steps the voltage back down to a sensible value. So because it's stepped down, there are more turns on the primary coil than on the secondary coil. So thinking about the voltages, output 25 kilovolts. Uh, moving at 400 kilovolts with the pylons and 230 volts in the house. So if we know the number of turns on the primary coil for the power station, we could work out how many turns we need on the secondary coil to achieve that. So it's just a case of rearranging the equation 
and plugging in some numbers. And hopefully we can follow that. We'll need 16,000 turns, but we had 1,000 to start with. The other way you can look at it is you go 16 times bigger, the voltage gets 16 times bigger, so you need 16 times the amount of turns on the secondary coil. You do a similar thing with the transform for the house, so rearranging to get the number of turns on the primary. Um, the numbers are slightly less nice in this, but we plug in the numbers and we get 869,565 turns. But again, we could have just looked at the change in voltage. It, it becomes 1,739 times less. So we could just look at the ratios. And you can always just use ratios with transformer questions. And it's a good way to check to see if you've got things right or not. The other thing we're going to need to talk about is power. Um, and we assume that uh, transformers are really quite efficient. So we assume them to be 100% efficient, which means the power in equals the power out, or the power in the primary equals the power in the secondary. And we also know that P equals IV, it's an equation we've looked at before, so we could look at IPVP equals ISVS. And if we look at that, if the voltage goes up by 100 times, as it did coming out of the power station, then the current goes down 100 times. And it seems uh, a lot of work to do this, so why do we bother? What's the point? Well, if we step the voltage up, we're going to step the, the current down and current is uh, responsible for heating in wires so if we make the current smaller then we're going to cause less heating if you're going to cause less heating you're going to waste less energy and if we waste less energy we're going to need to burn less fuel to start with and save the world hurrah so we waste less and things are better and everyone is happy one last thing we said we'd look at was this idea of the laminated iron core um, so the idea of a laminated iron core is your core is made up of layers. That's what laminated means. Um, so we've got a layered up core. And the reason that we make our core out of layers is it prevents things called um, eddy currents. And eddy currents are unwanted current in the core. And remember, we've already said that current causes things to heat up. So if you've got unwanted current, your uh, transformer is going to heat up. And if your transformer heats up, you're going to waste energy. And we've already said that actually transformers are pretty efficient. And we can assume them to be 100% efficient. So um, it's the laminatedness that helps the iron core stop getting too hot. So that's a really, really quick look at the transformers topic. Um, remember, you can always solve transformers um, questions using ratios and then work out the equation afterward. Um, remember, if it's stepping up or stepping down, the uh, coil with the more turns on is going to have more voltage across it. Um, find some past papers, practice these. And if you've got any questions about it, then uh, ask a question in the comments below. Thank you very much.